So today we want to bring John Taylor, Professor John Taylor, who sits in the Raymond Chair of Economics at Stanford. That's pretty good. Okay. Uh, undergrad at Princeton. I know Coach Coach Rossi. I'm sorry. I'm just Coach a Harvard guy from Aliquippa. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Went to undergrad at Princeton, got his PhD in economics at Stanford, just taught at Stanford, Princeton, Yale, Columbia. Uh, uh, Undersecretary of, uh, of, of uh, International Affairs for the Treasury, you know, numerous awards for his publications, his research, advisor to presidents and foreign councilmen. You know the best thing that ever happened to John was he was captain in 1963, Shady Side Football. So I want to introduce Mr. Taylor to you, Dr. Taylor to you, and, and just say this. Well, okay, Coach, here thank they are you. 50 years later. Thank you, thank you so much. This is actually, I, he sent me a letter, said, "Would you like to come and talk to the team?" And made my day. Actually, I got a favorite things like getting accepted to a good college or something. I got a chance to talk to you guys. So, um, to me, uh, Shady Side has so many good memories, and football is a big, big part of it is it's got these traditions of the place. But I had to prove to you I was the captain of the team. So I brought a picture. So I want to send it to pass this picture around while I talk about it. Can you guys yeah. help pass that around for me? Just pass it around. So, so this is a picture taken on that field up there. And um, you can see me when, you, when it comes around. You can see me. I'm the guy standing up in the middle. I have black hair. I don't have gray hair then. I had black hair. Uh, looked a little slimmer then, and uh, it was a great team. So this is a picture of a, of a tradition at Shadyside where they invited captains from earlier years to come by. So that's why I want to talk about this. That's kind of the traditions that we have that we remember. So the guy kneeling down, the other guy who suited up, was a co-captain. His name's Jim Rothenberg. He couldn't come, he, but he lives in California like I do. As the coach said, I've, I'm a teacher at at Stanford. So Jim lives in California. Jim uh, runs one of the most successful money managing uh, mutual funds in the world. It's an amazing, amazing guy. One guy is not in the picture. He's kind of like, I call him either, like the other co-captain, not really formally, but really how he's a team spirit guy. He drove us, just enthusiastic. Craig Ramsey. Craig also in California. He's coming. He's, he's at this, right? He's probably already here. So Craig basically started one firm after another, started high-tech firms in Silicon Valley. And I think that kind of attitude, whether it's responsibly managing things or starting new things, is just the kind of thing you guys are learning as, as, as a team here. That's what those guys learn. Now, I don't know why you're all playing football, but I tell you what, I played it because I loved it. In fact, it really made shady side for me in so many dimensions. I, I just want to tell you a little bit about it because it may be similar for some of you. I, I didn't want to come here. I grew up in the south side of Pittsburgh. My parents said, why don't you go to this school? This would be a good, good for you. I wasn't doing that well, kind of a screwball. Maybe it would have been a JD if I wasn't careful. So my dad said, look, why don't you just go for one year? Just go for one year. If you don't like it, you can come back and go to the local school with your friends. You'll feel better about that. But just give it a year. So I said, OK, I'll give it a try. So I came here in ninth grade. Of course, we had to try out for a team, right? Everybody's got to play a sport. So I chose football. I never played football before. I chose football. Got suited up in practice. And I'll never, remember, I'll never forget that tryout, that freshman tryout. As a coach, coach said, uh, OK, we're going to see if who's good and who's bad. So they set up kind of a little hole because some guys on both sides. And they had these, there was these two running backs, actually, Bob and Mike Maloney. And they'd played football before. In fact, they knew football well. Actually, their dad is in this picture. It's another amazing story. Their dad is in the Bob Maloney, class of 34. So they knew football, and they were tough. They were probably not as good as you guys, but they were really tough. So they said, OK, Taylor and you other guys, get up there and you tackle them. So they had, usually had a blocking back coming through. And then the guys just, just, you know, here you are, like, grabbing them. So, I grabbed it, tackled the Maloney's. Coach Bill Sales says, hey, you're tough as nails, Taylor. Made my day. I liked football. Eventually, I started to like physics and English and stuff like that. But it was football that made the place for me. So it really means a lot to be able to come back here and tell you about it. Another thing in this picture, I mentioned uh, Jim Rothenberg and Bob Maloney. There's a guy 
This is pretty amazing. Over on the right, he's class of 1915. That's 100 years before you seniors, 2015 class, 20 years. When he played, it was, the, the campus was in shady, the shady side part of Pittsburgh, sort of downtown. And the, what the records show, I, I appreciate Lisa helping me with this, what the records show, the football field was on the same, same corner as the school. It was kind of sunk down below the sidewalks, they say about 10 feet. There wasn't any sod, it was dirt. And when it rained, it basically became a sea of mud. And when it dried out, it became as hard as concrete. And that's where that team played. That's where Frank Spears, class of 1915, played. Just the traditions. Actually, maybe not surprising given that field. They didn't win too many games that year. They lost every game. So they didn't win their homecoming, obviously. 50 years later, that's me. That's my class. We had a better record, but you know, it wasn't a winning record. Four and five won four games, and we lost our home, homecoming game. I don't remember a lot about that, but we lost it because we could read about it in the same paper I cut that picture out. You guys are not going to lose your homecoming game, that's for sure. So a couple other things. The coach who um, called me tough as nails named Bill Sales, he's still around. Bill was also a teacher, like, like a lot of people at Shadyside, you do different things. You guys go both ways, I know some of you do. Some people will do coaching and teaching. Bill Sales taught me not only to play football, but he had a course called How to Study. This is, kind of, this is amazing, How to Study. I, I don't know where I'd be without that. One of the tricks he said, a lot of tricks, just like football tricks is study tricks. One of the tricks he said, when you're taking notes on a course, you know, teacher's gonna be saying stuff, you're not quite sure whether it's important when you're taking notes, you got to think about it later. So if there's something you think is maybe not so important, put WGAD next to it. WGAD. What's that mean? It means who gives a damn. So I put W, so I, I learned that and took notes on that, I whole, going to Shadyside, college. One time in college, went to Princeton. My friends uh, maybe weren't as serious as I was. They said, hey, can we use your notes to study for the test? The test was on Monday, it was on Friday. I said, sure, I'm going away, I'll just take my notes. They took my notes, came back Sunday night. Hey, these notes are great. We just memorized all the WGAD stuff. What does that mean? And so fortunately I had to tell, well, who gives a damn? And that's, uh, that's Bill Sales for sort of having an impact. So I, I, um, I teach a lot of students who are athletes at Stanford. Um, they get a lot out of the studies and the, and, the, and the football or golf, whatever it is. But I have to say, you know, my best, I want to tell you my best student was an athlete. I uh, didn't play football, but he took my freshman course. He took my, so he took it a sophomore year in the fall quarter. He learned about a concept in economics called opportunity cost, which means maybe I should be doing something that I'm doing right now. He dropped out of Stanford as a sophomore. He joined the Pro Golf Corps tour, and his name is Tiger Woods. So I said, hey, he's my best student. He learned about what he should be doing instead of studying, and he did that. So I hope you guys don't do that unless you're another golfer like Tiger Woods. But that's another example of teaching these students. So anyway, I want to take too much of your time, but I do want to go back to this homecoming game, which means so much to uh, us and that history and those traditions and those people in that picture. And maybe there'll be some of you will be at your 50th reunion and thinking about, I won't be there obviously, but there'll be some continuity. That continuity is important. Remember, there's a guy there 100 years before we graduated seniors. So you're playing West Shemokin. I talked to the coach a little bit about Shemokin. I actually I tried to look up, is, is there an East Shemokin? I couldn't find an East Shemokin. Actually, there's a Shemokin in the East. So, so what's the story? Well, they decided to call this West Shemokin because there was an Indian trail that went from Shemokin, way over on the Susquehanna River, to Katani, over on the Allegheny. So it went through, called the Shemokin Path. So when they created this new school, some mergers, they called it West Shemokin. But there was an Indian trail. So the West Shemokin mascot's the wolf. 
You guys are the Indians. What I remember about my Pennsylvania history, what I remember about my American history, is the Indians tamed the wolf. So beat them tomorrow for us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor.